Hi guys, hope you're all keeping safe and well. So another BCG bulletin. Let's update you on some new cars that are coming out. They're like, they're like buses. You know, you wait ages. Like in lockdown, we've been waiting ages for some new car news. Nothing happens, and all of a sudden, three of them come along at the same time. So we are going to be talking about the Mustang Mark One. We're going to be talking about the Lexus IS, and we're going to be talking about the new Citroen C4 Plus. There's a bonus I'll throw in as well at the end. The BMW M5 competition has had a few updates so we'll get into those before we do make sure that you're subscribing to this channel and hit that bell notification icon so that you get updates as soon as I upload a video and of course follow me on all social media just search for hashtag brown car guy that's on Instagram Twitter and Facebook and of course subscribe to browncarguy.com there it is right there cool let's get into this Turn of the Mark. Yeah, that's not my headline. That was actually on the Ford press release. You can't blame him. It's such a cool car. So the Mark 1 was originally introduced in 1969 to basically bridge the gap between the Mustang GT and the Shelby variants. And now it's doing the same thing. Now, of course, we have the Mark E, which is the uh, crossover SUV style electric version of the Mustang coming either at the end of the year or certainly beginning of next year. But this is the Mark 1, uh, a name that returns after 17 years uh, on this Mustang which uh, basically it takes the engine the tuned up engine out of the recent limited edition bullet edition uh, the Mark 1 will also be a limited edition so it gets the 480 brake horsepower V8 out of the uh, the bullet car you can have it with a six-speed uh, Tremec manual that's out of the Shelby GT 350 or you can have a 10-speed auto now they're talking about uh, a deeper shark nose grille which is reminiscent of the original <coughs> uh, 69 Mustang Mark 1 I don't quite see that, but certainly it's got a lot more presence. It is a new front end, um, and it comes with these uh, satin black racing stripes, which really uh, give it some presence. And of course, that fantastic Mac One, Mac One, Mac One, however you want to pronounce it, that logo that looks amazing comes in fighter gray, iconic silver, shadow black. Oxford White, it's a bit academic, isn't it? Uh, Velocity Blue, now that's the one I want. Twister Orange, Race Red, and Grabber Yellow. So lots of colors available there. Now they're saying that this car is uh, track ready. This is what this one is all about. And it does have various uh, aerodynamic bits and pieces that even in standard form makes it 22%, well, gives it 22% more downforce than a regular GT. But if you go for the handling package, which you only can get with the manual uh, gearbox version, then the downforce actually increases by 150% over the regular Mustang GT. And it takes things like, um, it borrows more stuff from the GT350 and GT500, like for example, the magnetic swing spoiler with gurney flap and and the rear tire spats as, as it's described here plus there's a new underbody cover to smooth the airflow underneath as well also important on the mustang uh, cooling this has got much better cooling in fact they say engine cooling is up by 50 percent it's got two side heat exchangers uh, additional radiators if you like one for engine oil one for the gearbox uh, it's got rear axle cooling and better brake cooling as well so that's all going to be good it will go on sale spring 2021 so early next year that's in the us okay no confirmation if it's coming here to europe or to the uk but they do say that they intend to sell this in dozens of countries so we can only hope for the best i think i'm i think that's pretty much a cert that it is going to come here so to see that in right hand drive form I can't wait for it. I think that's going to be fantastic. And it bodes well. If you, uh, if you have a chance to go and look at some of my Brown Car Guy and Buddies conversations, I recently talked to uh, PR comms director of Ford UK and Ford Europe. And uh, something that he said there uh, did suggest that there would be more metal coming over from America and indeed other Ford markets to UK and Europe. So fingers crossed also for that new Bronco as well. I think that's certainly on its way. Well, I certainly hope so anyway. So before we move on to Lexus, let's just take some moments to drink in the sights and the sounds of the Mustang Mark I. So 
So to the all new Lexus IS then. Now this car apparently replaces not only the IS but the GS as well which has also been discontinued. Now I've run Lexus IS models in the past on several occasions as long termers and I've always loved them. I really do like that. It's probably one of my favorite Lexus models in the range. Now chances are that this one is probably not going to come to UK and Europe which is a little bit of a shame because I do think that um, especially in the Asian community there's a lot of regard for that car and I've seen you know quite a lot of them right here in northwest London where there is a, an Asian community so uh, but I think that for Europe it's just like SUVs uh, in America it goes on sale later this year but just take a look at it it's like Lexus looked at BMW and saw them making the grill bigger and bigger and they said right you can imagine the designers sitting there designing this and the Lexus executive having just come back from a debriefing about what BMW is doing saying to him the grill make it bigger no no bigger still no no bigger bigger <laughs> and yet bigger because it is just huge it is ginormous it dominates the face of that car that spindle grill i don't think is any more spindle at the moment that is just a fat spindle um and this car has some interesting styling details the way the lines go over the wheel arches or rather they don't um the way they curve into the side profile that arch that cuts up across the rear door and actually into the rear wheel arch it's unusual it is interesting though and i think it probably is one of those cars that will look or will have more presence in the metal than it does in pictures now with this car they claim it's all about driving so they've spent apparently they've spent ages honing this thing on track um, they have enhanced body rigidity and um, you know they've made it lighter and all in an effort to make this thing sharper and a little bit more exciting to drive so it's a shame that maybe we won't be getting it here but it would be interesting to see what it drives like it will come with a 2 liter 241 brake horsepower rear wheel drive uh, with that format um, plus uh, the the IS300 will be a 3.5 V6 available either as all-wheel drive uh, or rear-wheel drive with 260 uh, brake horsepower. No, actually, I think that one's only all-wheel drive, but you will get an IS350 with, again, the 3.5 V6 with 311 brake horsepower, which is either all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. And you also will get the IS350 with the 311 horsepower rear-wheel drive in F-Sport, guys. And in F-Sport, guys, it comes with larger rear tires, dynamic handling package, adaptive variable suspension, limited slip, and 19-inch BBS alloys. Plus, let's not forget to mention the 17-speaker Mark Levinson sound system. Whew, damn, come on Lexus, bring this thing here. So Citroen have given us the first look at their brand new C4, but they haven't released many details. This has given us a chance to look at it. Now, traditionally, that's been a hatchback, and they're still referring to it as a hatchback. But when you look at the pictures, it very much looks like a compact crossover SUV type thing, but a little bit different. It's got that sort of coupe, sleeker roof line, which is quite nice. I mean, there's a bit of... Um, not so much Citroen DS as in Citroen uh, GS about it. I think that's what they're going for, particularly I think there's been an anniversary for that car. Um, and, you know, it's got these massive headlights. Whereas so everybody's going for these really slimline LED things, it's got massive headlights. So it's making a very bold statement about its looks. And in fact, they're saying that this will be the new era of Citroen style. So expect to see more of these elements in Citroens going forward. Now, like I said, not many details, but they will, they have told us there will be petrol version, diesel version, and there will be something called the E. EC4 and the EC4 as you may have guessed will be an electric only version of this car. Now uh, electric cars they often talk about the performance and speed of these cars but with this being Citroen they're more focused on comfort so of course it will have uh, Citroen's clever progressive hydraulic suspension system it will have comfy seats they're very much majoring on the fact that they want to make it practical and comfortable so i think this is going to be a pretty sweet ride for families i can't wait to see it when it comes out and to learn a little bit more about it i'll bring you more details as and when i can So, I did say three cars, and I did promise you a bonus fourth car. It's the BMW M5 competition. Now, this is not a new car. This is really just a few updates um, to the existing model for 2021. But you know what? It's such an incredible machine. It was worth gulping at it a little bit, wasn't it? So, what do you get? You get an updated grille. You get the tweaked kidneys, revised bumper, and splitter. Uh, inside, you get a um, bigger screen as well. So, you get the larger screen in the middle and a bigger instrument panel. So... There's also updated suspension and dampers, a stiffened engine mounts, larger brakes, uh, and basically this fast executive saloon has been set up for track work because that's where most 5 Series owners take their cars. 
I don't know how, tell me how many M5 owners take their cars on track, but I suspect it will be a pretty handy track weapon without any doubt. Probably give that um, Mustang a run for its money, especially when you consider the fact that it has still, of course, as it already has, a 625 brake horsepower, 4.4 V8 engine with 750 newton meters of torque through uh, driving that to all four wheels through an eight speed Steptronic, giving you a zero to 62 miles per hour time of 3.3 seconds and if you rip the limiter off which you can if you get the advanced uh, sports package you can get up to 188 miles per hour out of this thing and uh, they've also introduced a new m mode now in this version so i guess it's going to be easier to switch between of course the all-wheel drive mode and the two-wheel drive mode which you can still do the rear-wheel drive mode and then you can go drifting if you're inclined to do that once again in your executive 5 series saloon it'd be damn tempting though wouldn't it um price of the thing ninety-eight thousand pounds but you know what it sounds like it's worth every penny <laughs> <laughs> so there you go there's our quick bulletin of new cars out this week uh, if you uh, enjoyed that make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you get updates every time I upload a video make sure you also follow me on all social media to search for hashtag brown car guy that's on Instagram Twitter and Facebook uh, all the links are below as well as is browncarguy.com make sure you subscribe to that that's the channel right there and if you enjoy these videos and if you like to support me go to patreon.com forward slash shazad shake and there there's some exclusive piece of content from me to you which is kind of like a parody uh, or sequel to the original cannibal run movie it's a lot of fun i think so you let me know what you think even if you can't then please continue to like comment share subscribe all the rest of it that's all very much appreciated thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you again soon in the next video